Hi Emma, do you want some banana? What's happening then Rosella? We're going shopping because we need food <laughs> and some bibs and bobs. You ready and Emma to go shopping? All supportable VHF. Yeah, we're going to buy a handheld VHF because when we do the French canals, eventually, yeah. we need a ATIS enabled VHF. That's a legal obligation and we found a, a portable VHF, a handheld VHF that has that. It's £114, whether you buy it online or from a local shop, so of course we prefer the local shop. So we're going to go there and buy one. From the reign of Queen Victoria, they've got um, VR stamped on them. So this was obviously an old naval dockyard. There were lots of old sailing ships, etc., moored up here. I would be very interested to see what this place would have looked like back then. Mummy's doing the shopping, and we're having a disco. Yes, you've been very good, haven't you? <laughs> We've just got back to the marina and we are about to unload the car. But before we do that, just across the river there from where we are here is Upna Castle. So centre screen there, that is a 16th century castle. And you can't read this in the video, I'm sure, but on that wall to the right of it, it says no vessel to anchor opposite powder magazine uh, in very old writing so obviously at some point they used to keep gunpowder there and they didn't want vessels to be anchored opposite just cool little bits of history dotted around everywhere it's really nice this is convenient Okay, I think it's time for me to get out of here. The things you do to try and get a good shot. <laughs> wow.
Hello. Hi, Ma. Good morning. How are you today? <laughs> oh, are you ready to get up? Start playing. It's very warm today and it's a real party atmosphere around here, isn't it? Yeah, there is a food and drink festival since yesterday and today is tomorrow. And tomorrow actually we're going to try to check it out. Yeah, we'll hopefully get there. Today uh, I can't leave the boat because I've got work to do. But Rosella and Emma have just got the opportunity go to for go a for a quick walk. So yeah. going to go and enjoy so the sunshine. Sleep. <laughs> See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Enjoy. That's it. So work on the engine. Those of you who've been watching our recent videos will know that at one stage recently, it was the second time we'd ever started the engine. We didn't have any cooling water whatsoever coming out of the exhaust. I put some vinegar, which is 6% acetic acid, into the cylinder head, the water intake there. And that gave us cooling water, so I was happy to make the journey over here. On the short journey over here, we were fighting against the current and we had a couple of times the overheating alarm come on. So I'm now gonna do a more in-depth job, take lots of things apart and make sure that every part of this cooling system is nice and clean and free. Before I start, this is the engine bay insulation that I fitted recently to replace the old crumbling black stuff that was there before that was uh, completely useless. So I bought a big roll of that stuff. It was £49.99 with free shipping. And people have been asking, does it work? Absolutely, yes. I'll run the engine now with the panel off and the panel on just to show you the difference. I've just run the engine there for about 10 minutes and a couple of issues. We've got some water coming out from this little drain tube which comes out of the top of the anti-siphon valve. So I shall have a tweak of that. And we also have a diesel leak which appears to be coming from this banjo connector there. So I shall also be dealing with this. That explains that then. There was about a quarter of a turn to tighten that. So we will see if that leaks again now or not. There we are, it's just a little rubber diaphragm there with a hole in it. Very simple. I'm just gonna clean all this up and I'll see if that reseats. Do you know what? I think I'll get my friend vinegar out. I love vinegar, it's so useful. Okay, I've cleaned this up as best as I could. I couldn't actually find the vinegar so I used some oven cleaner instead. I've just cleaned up, especially the mating surface there, the flat surface perpendicular to the hole. And now I'm just about to anneal this copper washer. I'd normally use a propane torch for this, but this is so tiny that I can do it with a lighter. There we go. Heat that up until it's cherry red, and then you just quench it. You don't actually have to quench it, you can just let it cool down in the air.
I'm using a similar process to clean this end and you can see some scale there. So I'm hoping this is a simple fix. A new kit, uh, the diaphragm kit for this is about £4 so it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. But I think that I won't need to buy a new kit because that diaphragm looks perfect. It's just a case of having the correct clean mating surfaces and I'm pretty sure this is going to work. Get off that microphone. Ciao nonno! Ciao! I'm about to start the real work on the engine now on the cooling system. Before I do that I'll just give you a quick overview. This is a raw water cooled three cylinder naturally aspirated diesel engine. So there's no separate heat exchanger and coolant. It just draws raw water in from outside into here. There's an impeller in here which is driven by the engine and that draws the water and pushes it up here. It then goes through the anti-siphon valve which is up way above the water line. The water comes down and goes into the cylinder head on this side. It runs through the cylinder head all the way across here and out to the other side where it comes through this pipe and that goes into the elbow and that goes out the exhaust. You then got the thermostat and that regulates the engine temperature. So having said all that, oh, by the way, I know this isn't a correct fuel hose. I saw that before we bought the boat. I have bought the correct one. And I will fit it. So before I get any comments about that, I know. I'm gonna start off with the exhaust elbow. So that's just two hose clamps. Then I'll remove the hose and then I'll remove these four bolts. Then I'll remove this, which these are all 10 millimeters, these little clamps that hold the pipes in place. So I'll remove that and then I'll remove the pipe and I should be able to withdraw the exhaust elbow. This could be a bit of useful information for somebody rather than mess around with this bolt which is underneath uh, a fuel line, you can actually just leave this bracket in position if you rotate the thermostat. Then it can be removed without moving that bracket out of the way. I'm now removing this pipe, which goes into the cylinder head. It's quite restricted access, but you can get on it with a thin extension. If you look centre screen there you'll see a hole and that is the water distribution pipe and I believe that I will be able to remove this with the cylinder head and everything still attached so I'm going to try drifting it out from this side and pushing that all the way through the far side of the engine. Bless you Emma, bless you.
So the 9mm has got it started. I'm going to try and use an 8 now. Well, it's not really moving, so you know what that means. Time for a bigger hammer. Well, it's after 10 o'clock at night, Emma's asleep, and that distribution pipe will have to wait until tomorrow. We have some tortillas, tortillas. tortillas. for our evening meal. I had to cook them, uh, and I got interrupted three times why Emma woke up. <laughs> yeah, so but I'm sure they'll be delicious, aren't they? Probably freezing cold now, but... That's okay. And before we go, we just want to say two things. First of all, if you enjoy videos like this, or if you find them useful, we have a Patreon page. So if you want, you can contribute just $1 per month and you will get exclusive benefits by being a patron. And also you will know that you're helping us to make more videos like this. So that'd be really cool, thank, thank you. you. And the other thing is, if you want to know how this engine job goes, then tune in to the next episode where you'll see me continue working on it. Okay, thanks for watching. See you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Cheers. <laughs> Shandy. <laughs>